one of the major promises God has given us is the fact that he is pouring wealth into this church for his own purpose not just so that we'll have money to spend <laughs> okay for his own ultimate purpose his own ultimate purpose as the years go by we'll get to understand it clear but God is bringing us up for influence in our society uh, I was reading an article by Dr. Pantu Tomi in The Guardian on Friday. He titled it, Why We Are Still Poor. And he was quoting uh, a former minister, federal minister from an African country who delivered a paper at one of these UN summits. And the man said something that caught my attention. He said that um, in the developed world, it is people who created wealth for themselves that decided to influence government, capture government, move into leadership in politics. He said they went into politics in order to protect their wealth. And the best way to protect their wealth was to empower the people to be able to buy the things th that they produce anyway. So when they get there, they empower everybody, lift the standard of living of everybody, give them buying power. So generally, that's what happens. President George Bush of the United States was a successful businessman before he went into politics. He's a very wealthy man. He's into oil business and so many other areas. Now, uh, this man now said the difference with Africa is the fact that it is people who have not been able to create wealth for themselves who get into government. They now use government to get the wealth. You know, for many people around here, politics, and getting into a government position is the major means by which you cure your poverty disease once and for all. Now, there's a new Africa evolving. There's a new Nigeria evolving. Where it's only people like you, amen, who have created wealth for themselves, who have achieved tangible things. People whose turnover in their business is even more than that of a local government anyway. Some, more than that of a state, they are the kind of people we will be having as local government chairman, governors, senators, president of Nigeria very soon. You are the one I'm talking about. People who won't need a salary from the government to survive. If they get there, it is to give, not to get. Amen. So they will know exactly what to do by the time they get there. Just <laughs> amplify the principles you have applied for building your organization on a public scale. That's all. This place is changing. And that's why we have a church like this. That's why God raised a church like this. Oh, please take advantage of everything we have to offer. We have loads of materials. We give them out every week in, week out. Week in, week out. The tapes are there. The books are there. Parable of dollars. And we even bring in some. On your way out, there's a series that blessed me financially one of the most powerful teachers on finances, I think, around the world, who can bring it down to every man's language, Robert Kiyosaki. And I have the whole series that he's written. They'll bless you big time. We got them in the bookshop, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Cash Flow Quadrant, uh, Rich Dad's Guide to Investing, Rich Kid, Smart Kid, Retire Young, Retire Rich, all of them are there. And then he has the Rich Dad's Advisor Series, specialists in different areas. And I have most of those books too. There's one sales dogs. You are not in business if you can't sell. Everybody is selling something. One of probably the most important skill you need to develop to succeed financially is selling. And there's one there on sales, dro uh, sales dogs. There's one on own your own corporation. It's there also. I have that one too. Beautiful one. Uh, please take advantage of all. And of course, there's financial standard. Amen. Amen. <laughs> If you eat what rich people eat, you will grow to their size. And the food for your spirit is information. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word. Information is food for your spirit. So please take advantage of all of those. This month, we have discussed that the starting point for your wealth is vision. Hearing from God. We said vision, it is vision that commands provision. It is vision that commands provision. You don't see money with your eyes, you see it with your mind. You don't recognize money with your eyes, you recognize it with your mind. 
It's the money you see in your mind that eventually you will hold in your hand. As you think it in his heart, so is he. And when God wants to change your status, he introduces new thoughts and ideas into your mind. That's how he responds to the tithes and offerings that you give, mostly. So, vision, starting point, hearing from God. Then we also went on to talk about planning. The need for planning. You've heard from God. But sit down, calculate from where you are to the fulfillment of the vision that you saw. Many Christians think that when you use your mind, you are not using faith. If you are using faith, you won't use your mind. It's a lie of the devil. If you research into faith very well, you will realize you can't have faith if you don't think. Anyway, you have to have a workable plan on paper. If it doesn't work for you on paper, you don't stand a chance on ground. Last Sunday, we moved on uh, to talk about two things. First of all, the acquisition of skills. That one of the most important messages we need to teach the African now. We need skill development. Skill development. Skill development. When you have seen the vision, you must grow to the size of the vision. Excuse me, to qualify for its fulfillment. When you have seen the vision, you must grow to the size of the vision. Develop your skill to the size of the vision. You've seen yourself being MD CEO. So the big question is, do you have the skills? If God promotes you beyond your level of wisdom, he's promoting you into disaster. Paul warned Timothy, when you want to make people leaders in church, he said, let them first be proven. They should not be novices. Let them first be proven, then let them use the office. Okay? So there's a need for you to develop enough skill to match up with the kind of a place you are trusting God to take you. The last Sunday, we talked about hard work. Hard work, the need for you to release value through work. And of course, we have to emphasize that mental work will pay you better than physical work. People think work is physical work. That's why they stress themselves out. Hard work doesn't kill. It is stressful work that kills. You have to develop a strong work ethic. Jesus said, my father worketh it at all, and I work. Amen. You can't stroll to a goal. You can't get something for nothing. Prayer won't break and fasting won't break that principle. They only aid it. There's no room for the lazy man at all in God's economy. There is no room for the lazy man at all in God's economy. There is one solution for the lazy man. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 10. He who will not walk, let him not eat. Let hunger beat him till his head becomes correct. Amen. <laughs> That's very important. Now, uh, uh, this morning, we want to discuss about managing your funds. Managing your funds. As the money begins to come in now, what do you do with it? In Luke chapter 16 and verse 10, Jesus talks about the place of faithfulness in managing small things. Luke 16 from verse 10. It says, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? The key word there is faithful. Faithful, reliable, trustworthy, effective management of what's been given to you. He says, if you can't manage what is little, how will you manage what is much? If you can't, listen, your current level of income is just a test. A test from God to see how you will behave when money enters your hand. It is faithfulness with little that qualifies you to move on to the next level. Heaven is very prudent with its resources. If you have worked with God long enough, you should know him and understand how he works. He is very prudent with his resources. He hates waste. In John chapter 6, after the miracle of multiplication of loaves, John chapter 6 verse 13, it will surprise you that after everybody had the earth, everybody was okay, Jesus, instead of going on with his disciples, came back and told his disciples, gather up the fragments. He said that nothing be wasted. Gather up the fragment. I don't want 
anything to waste. Take note of what they gathered. Twelve baskets full of food. Twelve baskets full of food. This was a situation that started with only five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. Please think about it. The whole situation started with just five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. At the end of the day, when they gathered just the little, little bits that had fallen down, there were 12 baskets full of food. If you are effective with your management, God will somehow ensure that you never get back to your starting point. God will ensure you go beyond lack. You see, the situation at the end, even after eating, the point is that what they gathered, what they were able to scrape, what they were able to save, was more than what they started with at the beginning. So now, they were on a better pedestal if they were going to work another miracle. Amen. The problem with many Christians is because of effective management, they keep coming back to the same spot in their finances, harassing God. The same spot over. The same spot over. And that suggests to God, this person is not good with management. God hates waste. Proverbs 21 verse 20. There is much treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise. He said, but the foolish man squanders it all. That's how God sees it. If you spend everything, he said, you're a fool. The first time I got insight into this verse, I fell on the side of a fool. I didn't have to deceive myself. I didn't have a dime in savings. Even the church didn't have anything in savings. The first thing I did was to open a savings account for myself, open one for the church, and then withdrew a budget. I'm going to talk about the budget in a minute. Immediately we do a budget and we began to enforce the budget. If you will bring something in, any requisition in that is outside our budget, it will have to be a do or die affair or something that touches the core value of our church. Or else, before you even present it, you know it has died. The last obstacle you have to go through is myself. I defend that budget with all the strength that I can. I am not, I, you see, I learned a big lesson. You cannot afford to be sentimentally attached to things if you are going to prosper financially. You can't be sentimentally attached to things. When money comes into your hand, the way the thing does you, it's as if if you don't buy some things, you will die. Die. You see, the only thing that will die is your flesh. Amen. <laughs> the natural craving. Lost. That's what will die. Amen. That's what will die. That's why some night wives almost knock their husbands to death. As if they don't get the money, they will die. You won't die. We can't eat everything today. Inside the harvest that we just got are some seeds. Amen. That's what God told them. I have put seeds inside all these halves that you see. I've given you everything to eat, oh, but the seed of the one you will eat tomorrow and the one your grandchildren will eat, the seed is inside this one. You eat everything, you have eaten the future. So you must be able to hold yourself. Listen, if you can't discipline yourself in spending 10,000, you won't be able to discipline yourself in spending 10 million. When money comes, money doesn't change anybody. Money doesn't improve you. Money only amplifies whatever it meets. Amen? If it meets a squander mania, it will multiply apply the squander mania to raise, raise to power 10. Amen? <laughs> uh -huh. There are some people... Whether you give them 10,000 or 10 million, by the time they finish with it, they will be owing money. How we spend money is a habit. And what we are suggesting this morning is that we cultivate excellent habits in the management of money. You will not fail. God will be able to trust you. He said, if you have not been faithful in your righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? So you will find out, actually, it is heaven that commits funds to people's trust. It is heaven that commits it. I see God clearing you to the next level in the name of Jesus Christ. So please, develop a budget and enforce that budget. Develop a budget. Please, that's important. Develop a budget and enforce the budget. You say, how much is it that I should write budget? That's the issue. There's no amount of money that cannot be budgeted. Whatever your income is now, budget it. 
do a budget, decide how it will be spent before it arrives. It has a way of clouding your reason once it has arrived. You must understand that. Have a budget. Now, number one item on your budget, tight. Proverbs 3 verse 9. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase. God first. Tight. 10% of your income. No negotiation. Amen. <laughs> Is it, I've already written it down even before the money arrives. So there's no point now negotiating because after it has arrived and everything is doing buy me, buy me, buy me, buy me, buy me, you begin to look for where to cut and where to adjust. And for some people, the first place to consider is tight. Say, so, well, God understands. The devil too understands. The devourer understands. <laughs> God understands. Poverty too understands. That you are beckoning on it <laughs> when you refuse to pay your tithe. The first thing, the tithe, and then that's when some people will be calculating. Actually, I think it should be the tithe of my net, not gross. No problem. If you don't want gross problems, stop making deductions on God. Amen. <laughs> okay, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you may ask or think. The next item, offerings. 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 That includes what you give. Eh? Some people, it's on Sunday morning that they will be looking. If there's anything there, we give. If there's nothing there, we don't give. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work in uh, 1 Corinthians 16. See what Apostle Paul said. It doesn't work that way. It's too late to be giving God change. If there is change. First Corinthians 16 and verse 2. It says on the first day of the week. Let each one of you lay something aside. Storing up as he may prosper. That there may be no collections when I come. Store it up. Lay it aside. Budget what you will give. According to, this, to your size. Your current size. According to God's blessings on you. Calculate how much you will be able to afford. Every service through the month budget it. And then make room for benevolence. You want to give to the poor. You want to give to people. Make some provision for that. Um, and then make provision for what you want to give to men of God in your life. Make provision for that. I have provision for that. It's a standard percentage. Go straight after the tithe. Um, you want to do thanksgiving every month for your life. For God's blessing. Budget it. So the second item there is offerings. The third item, I suggest, is what I call kingdom investment. Kingdom investment. Kingdom investment. The same way you want to invest in shares, you want to invest in real estate, you want to invest in fixed deposit, is the same way you should invest in God's kingdom. You must understand. Jesus said it in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. He said, don't lay up treasures for yourselves on the earth. Where mud and rust can corrupt and where thieves can break in to steal. He said, lay up treasures for yourself in heaven. This is important. The same way I invest in investment instruments is the same way I invest. In fact, before I invest in investment instruments, I invest, first of all, thank you, in the kingdom of God. Knowing that this world's financial systems can crash. I know that. The financial market can crash. The banking system can crash. I know that. Okay? I know that. So I invest in the kingdom of God, knowing that there is no thief that can steal from God's kingdom. Amen. This is beyond tithes now and offerings. I do invest to the size that I do into other forms of investment. So I suggest kingdom investment, especially if there is a church project going on. Make your investment. And when you need to make withdrawals, you can readily call on heaven to make withdrawals. The kind of interest God will calculate for your destiny, no bank can offer it. Somebody say amen. You know what I find out? Every year, I keep overtaking the calculations of returns that come from the investments that I have made. There is no way the returns from those investments can catch up with the speed at which my finance is growing. 
Only the kingdom of God can offer that. Kingdom investment. And then the next item on your budget, savings. 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 Financial experts say that is a way of paying yourself. When you buy things, you are not actually paying yourself. Most of the things you buy are things that begin to depreciate from the moment you buy them. Those shoes, those clothes, everything. Invariably, you're not paying yourself. You are helping to feed other people's families. The money you save and invest to bring more money in for you is the one you spend on yourself in real terms. So, take time to save. Financial experts re recommend a minimum of 10%. When I look into Genesis 41, I see that Joseph recommended for the whole of Egypt that they save 20% of the food that was coming in every year. 20% is good. You know, I heard of a couple that decided to apply that. Seven straight years of savings, of saving 20%. And they were launched. What they saved and invested was now enough to take care of their bills forever. Their annual basic bills, children's school fees, rent, everything else. Seven years of savings can launch you out of famine. Amen. <laughs> what you save during the year of surplus becomes gold during the years of famine. Now, to squander everything. Whether some people will be broke at 60 or not, it's already been determined now. Those who save now, this money will turn into gold in just a few years down the line. I have some uh, suggestion with respect to savings. First of all, I ask that you try to keep two to six months equivalent of your monthly expenses in the bank. Saved in the bank. The equivalent of two to six months if you check your monthly expenses times two or ultimately times six, keep that value in the account. It helps you to take care of sudden change. There's nothing you can do about it. This world is dynamic in its nature. Things are going to change. But when you have that back in the account, it delivers you from fear. Fear of change. Fear of what may happen. And then there are loads of people who are dangerously married to their current jobs even though they are frustrated. They can't leave because they don't know what will happen. One, if they leave within one month, they may be broke and wretched. That's why they are afraid. And I say here that it's not only an employer that has a right to sack his employee. There are employees that have a right to sack their employers. You don't have that right if you don't have some savings in the account. Amen. Some people need to move on, start their own business, or whatever. You need to keep that savings in the account. And then secondly, once you have achieved that goal, everything else you save should go into investment for the future. The next item in your budget that I suggest is housekeeping. Housekeeping. The money you will use to take care of your house, to buy food and drinks, chicken, turkey, fish. Amen. <laughs> Whatever it is you want to buy, housekeeping. If you're a man in this service, you should know that verse. If you don't, your wife will quote it to you very soon. First Timothy 5.8, it says, He that does not provide for his own house is, you see, you see, the women know it. <laughs> He has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. It's very funny, but as a culture that I see among some uh, African men, I believe they are not here today. Somebody said amen by faith. <laughs> there are people who don't take care of their families. We have a culture that impresses other people outside but does not take care we are so concerned about what people will say about what people will think because we have a culture of dependence that says it is your responsibility to take care of everybody else once you have just a little improvement in your situation 
But listen to me. God says if you don't take care of the family he gave you to take care of, as far as he's concerned, you are backslidden. So take care of the family. And there are some men who are just self-centered. Stingy, self-centered. When they dress, you can see it on them. They are the only ones that are best dressed in their house. Wife, children, they can look anyhow. And then they give some small amount of money, make plenty of noise over the small amount of money in the house, but check them out. When they dodge into tasty fried chicken to take care of themselves, <laughs> and then by the time they arrive at home and Madame puts beans on the table, he says, don't worry, I'm not hungry. Not lie. <laughs> He's taking care of himself somewhere else. It's not scriptural and it's not spiritual. Amen. Provide something for housekeeping. Your household also includes your parents, your extended families as God enables you to do. And then after housekeeping, make provision for utilities. Utilities. That includes your rent. It's remarkable how people earn monthly income. They save nothing for their rent. At the end of the year, they will now be binding and losing and believing God for their rent. For God's sake. When God blessed you with that income, he factored your rent inside it. Keep something aside every month if you know you won't be able to confront it at once. Utilities also covers your electricity bill. Amen. Make provision for NEPA. Amen. It's embarrassing for them to cut your light every month. Make provision. Utilities. Make provision for transport. Make calculations. Separate money. Put it in an envelope. Write transport at the back. Bold. Keep it somewhere. Take it out. Every day as you have to go out. It's very important. Provide for transport. Provide for phone. The use of your GSM. Provide for the use of your GSM. The latest introduction in town to keep some people permanently broke <laughs> who are not disciplined. Pay less and talk more. Now lie. Have you ever seen anywhere like that? Eh? In, in all labor there is profit. The talk of the lips tended to pen you through GSM. Uh. <laughs> they say pay less. Talk more. You too, you are talking more. Every day you are buying recharge card. The guy who says Richard Card already knows where you come through every morning. They are waiting for you on the road. All they have to do is to do it like this. Say, ah. Bring it. Bring one. <laughs> Bring one. Every day you are buying Richard Card. It's good. You will eat Richard Card very soon. <laughs> there is no award for that. Okay? You must decide from the beginning of the month how much you will spend on GSM. Amen. When you have gotten to the level where maybe your organization or company can pay your phone bills, whatever it is, eh, good. But <laughs> if you are still on your way to the top, you've got to be careful. I was uh, reading this cartoon in The Guardian yesterday. One young man was telling his friend, you know what, I'm owing money. Terrible. The friend said, why? He said, I borrowed 5,000 Naira to buy recharge cards last week. Uh, the friend said, then your GSM number has changed. You have a new GSM number. He said, hey, what is it? He said, it is O O O. That O is O W E. O O O 5 O O O O. <laughs> That's your new GSM number. Permanently in debt. <laughs> Somebody flashed you. You too. But, uh, it, it must be that you want to talk you to flash the person back <laughs> okay I've seen you around <laughs> thank you you too if you want to talk call me <laughs> no one called me say uh, how are you can you come home I have something important call me call me Pim Pada. call me later uh, when you are ready you to call me okay <laughs> or we will meet in church on Sunday amen hallelujah Budget for utilities. Those are the things that take our money away. And then the next item, debt payment. Debt payment. If you are owing money, don't wait till you have some lump sum, big amount of money to wipe out everything at once. You see, debt makes some tremendous impact on your psychology. You must understand your own design. Proverbs 22 verse 7, the borrower is servant to the lender. Now, as long as you carry this picture or burden of a servant 
it's difficult for you to get the kind of self-esteem you need to attract funds. So you have to get out of debt as fast as you can. There is nothing powerful, no big achievement about owing money. Okay? Settle it. And then you must understand, once you give a little bit out of the debt, the person you are owing money feels relaxed, that at least you intend to pay. The problem with a lot of people is when they refuse to pay anything, the person they owe begins to think they don't even want to pay at all. And there are people like that in this city. Bold debtors. Bold. What is it? I won't kill myself. Ah, Whether it is somebody else's money on your own, God should just not allow you to lack anyone. That's their policy. Pay your debt. Owe no man anything except to love. The next thing I suggest is tax. Pay your tax. Make provision for tax. You know, in this time, we live ahead of the rest of the country. I'm saying that now so that some people will not go to jail. The new Nigeria that is evolving is one where our tax laws are going to be enforced. There's no use running a government if the citizens will not pay tax. In Nigeria, we love to enjoy social services without paying for them. There are loads of people who don't even have any meter in their house. Yet they are angry that Nepal is, cannot supply light. Where should Nepal get the money from? No meter. In some houses, the meter, they have disconnected a long time ago. As soon as Nepal cuts it, they have a technician in Nepal, they will give to, uh, 50 naira, connect it back again. A lie. It doesn't work that way. In Romans chapter uh, 13, verses 6 to 8, for because of this, you also pay taxes. For they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. It's very, very important. Pay your tax. And then finally, I call this one orders. You may list them specifically or group them together. Buy books. Make provision to buy books. Make provision to buy clothes for yourself. Uh, you should enjoy yourself. Make provision for going to tasty fried chicken. Make provision for tantalizing your wife. It's very good. Amen. Yeah, the Bible says God gives us richly all things to enjoy. First Timothy 6.16 That we said you should save and um, invest does not now mean you should become a, a compulsive neurotic. When it comes to the issue of saving money, you now punish yourself. If you die suddenly, all the money, somebody else will eat it. So it's only 10 or 20 percent we say you should save. Enjoy yourself too. Amen. <laughs> Good. In summary, spend less than you earn. If you want to prosper, it's not how much you spend that makes you rich, it's how much you make, it's how much you keep and invest. Spend less than you earn. Fight your appetite. You see, the same way you have appetite for food and appetite for drink is the same way you have appetite for things. You see, you are created for excellence. You like good things. There's nothing wrong with you. You like good things. Me too, I like good things. Amen. But if in the process of enjoying good things, good things now eat you up, you have not been wise. Fight your appetite. Ecclesiastes 5.11 when riches increase, so are those who eat them. It's a law. In economics, they call it Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law says expenses will always rise to meet income. Have you noticed any time you get some bulk money that you begin to get ideas? All of a sudden, things that were not urgent before become urgent. And then everything you see that is on sale, you just suddenly realize now you can afford them. Everything you see, buy me, 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 buy me. Even in the old dog, you know, in Lagos, there's nothing they don't sell except human beings. In the old dog, buy me. <laughs> All they have to do is just come near the mirror. Then you look at it. You, you see, those guys too, they understand human psychology. When they bring it and you look straight, they won't bother you. When they bring it and you too, you are looking at it. You are looking at. <laughs> so, uh, how much is it? 
you are hooked. <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> he said, I'm going to bring 500 naira. He said, no, I better go away. It's only 150. He said, okay, bring 250. They go away. I don't even want again. Ah, he wore. <laughs> he who lays his hand on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. You must not look back. You must buy this thing today. Fight your appetite. Some of those things that look like do or die, as if you will die if you don't get them. You won't die. Fight your appetite. Amen. <laughs> and please don't fall into the temptation of our culture. It is the size of the things you buy, the size of the car you ride, it is the power of the clothes you wear that make you rich. They will deceive you. It's a deceptive culture. Don't fall into that trap. There are many, you see, there are power, there are people who struggle to appear on the pages of ovation. It says, by the time you see them there, you will think they have arrived. They have not even started. They are just pretending to have arrived. There are lots of people in this society. It's better for people to think you don't have anything and for you to have some solid assets. Amen. Uh -huh. By the time you have deceived everybody, you are the one who knows where the shoe is pinching you. Uh -huh. That's why there's no point for you to go to a party. And we emphasize that here. Trying to impress everybody. How much is it you want to give the person who is celebrating? 500 naira. You changed it into 5-5 five, five naira. 100 pieces. So for 15 or 20 minutes, you refuse to move from there. So the musician too would say, quickly send one of his uh, associates to go and ask for your name and where you work. Then they will begin to sing your praise. Your own head too will swear. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know. Uh, like what was saying the last time, there are people like that. When they are finished like that, they will now go and stand for lift by the roadside. Call Money to use to go home. He doesn't have. They have recorded him on video that he has money. Next time, they will call his name Chief Launcher. And he himself still needs to be launched out of poverty. <laughs> mm. Listen. Stop trying to live to other people's expectations. Don't help people beyond your ability. Uh, uh, one man of God, Dr. Mensa Otabil, a Ghanaian, he said there's a principle by which Africans live. It is called the principle of mutual impoverishment. Mm. Mutual impoverishment. We cooperate with one another to keep ourselves poor. If your, once your situation looks a little better than that of everybody else, it's your responsibility to carry everybody else along. If you don't, they will use power for you. One rich man, six poor people, all of them are poor together. Nonsense. They will say you are wicked. Let them say what they want to say. Mutual improvement. I call it crab technology. You know if you throw 20 crabs into a basket, none of them will come out. As soon as one begins to climb the side of the basket, the others will pull it down. You are not going anywhere. So that's what happens around here. The people struggling to climb out, to stabilize financially. They are not yet settled financially. They have to carry so much load. Listen, you must come to the point where you realize your middle name is not El Shaddai. That's not your middle name. So when everybody expects you to solve all their problems, if you pretend to be El Shaddai, you will, be, you will die. <laughs> your El Shaddai will turn to El Shaddai, okay? <laughs> when you get to the limit of how much you can do, tell people this is where it helps. Amen? <laughs> Just somebody else in the bid of trying to help. Okay? Then it's important... That you overcome greed. Be generous. Be generous toward God. Be generous towards people. Have an open hand. Money flows. It's not meant to be damned. It's important. And finally, please remember what Jesus said in Matthew 25. In the parable of talents. Or what we call parable of dollars here. In verse 28, he said, of Matthew 25, he said, Take the talent from him that has one and give it to him who has ten. 29. He said, For to him that has will more be given. And to him that has not, even what he has will be taken away. Money will always flow. 
from those who don't treat it well to those who treat it well. Money is like a damsel, like a maiden that you court with courtesy and treat very well. If you treat it very well, it will move in your direction. If you don't, it will move away from you faster than it even came. I believe sincerely that the wealthiest generation of Nigerians are here this morning. I believe, I, I've said it before, I will say it again. In your family, you are the new definition of wealth. Yeah. If they thought they have seen a rich person before, they've not seen any at all. My God will trust you with riches. Through riches. Through wealth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I present everyone under the sound of my voice to you for a supernatural turnaround. I ask for a shift to another level in their finances. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you for honoring your word. In Jesus' name. This week, you will hear good news. That interview will work out. That trip will be fruitful. That examination will be successful. Favor will attend your ways. And uh, where they have forgotten you for a long time or they sat on your proposal. This week, whoever sat on your proposal, God will lift the person up. This is your week of good news. In Jesus' mighty name.